although uh, we're in Brazil here, it yeah. certainly doesn't feel like Brazil today, does it? Arnold? Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> uh, it's great to have a chance to, to chat with Arnold. Arnold's from, maybe you can just tell us where you're from. Uh, I'm from a place uh, called Colrain in Northern Ireland. Okay. Which uh, the next stop from my home, the next country north, is Iceland. Okay, so so we get a lot of cold weather from Iceland as well. You're used to cooler temperatures. They are, yeah. Um, what drew you to become involved uh, here at Mount Horror? Well, for many uh, years, John Phyllis Logan uh, visited here uh, in Brazil. And each time they come back, they give uh, a talk on how they get on in Brazil. I believe they started in around 95, if that's right. Yeah, yeah somewhere in there. Around 14, 15 years of becoming yeah. involved. And they said about 2006 would someone like to come out to Brazil right. with them on the next visit. And I thought, yeah, I would, I would do that. Reason being is that for a lot of years in my business, I grew the business from a coffee shop with four tables to four restaurants now, with lots of tables. Right. And I believe that that was the Lord given me uh, a break in business. And my business uh, blossomed and, and did very well. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, the Lord's going to do it to me. Why can't I not be to do it to other people? Do the Lord. Uh, but it was always in the back of my mind. It was never, let's go and do it. Yes. Uh, but the Lord kept working on me. And uh, one time, John Phyllis asked someone to come out. And uh, as I said before, I said, yes, I would. But I never. I never went to the to the meeting. Just never. Yeah. And a year later, they uh, had been in Brazil and come back and said how the, the protest was getting on. And if anyone may come out, there's a meeting on Wednesday at 7:30. And uh, I said I would go and I said to my wife, I think I'll go to that. And she, of course, she had heard it before, and she said, Well, well, whatever, you know. <laughs> so coming up to the the, the time. Uh, she so asked if it was going, and uh, I said, yeah, well, maybe, well, we'll see. But on television that night was a football match, Champions League, uh, Liverpool against someone. Right. And uh, I thought, John Phyllis, football. Champions League, football, <laughs> you know. So my wife asked me again, right at quarter to seven, are you going? And I said, yeah, I probably will. And uh, the next thing I remember is when John Phyllis drove there. Hmm. Uh, I'm not really sure how you got there. No, no. I can, I, I can recall ringing the doorbell. I do not I do not remember saying to my wife, I'm away, see you later, I'll be an hour or whatever. The doorbell is the first thing I can remember from that night. Uh, and Phyllis opened the door and she didn't say hello Arnold. She says, oh, you want to go to Brazil? And I said, yeah, come in. So we came in and uh, there was a few other people there who also came on, on the visit, a girl called Rena and uh, John, uh, John Phillips, and uh, we showed a, a video of Mont yes. and uh, some of the projects that have been involved, and uh, I said, yeah, I would like to be involved in that. We then filled a, a form in, and got uh, a few weeks later, got an interview with Sam's, uh, the fellow from Sam's Ireland come down, and just talk about it, and, if we were right for it or whatever, right. you know, and thank you we were. And uh, the next thing, I mm -hmm. arrived in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, were, what were sort of some of the first things you identified here? Specifically, I suppose, the needs, because that's what you had yes, come to, 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 yeah. to see. Yeah. Right. I, didn't, uh, I thought it would have been uh, a lot worse than what it was. Right. But I thought back to John and Phyllis coming back here 12, 14, 13 years back. It must have been horrendous, right. really, you know. A lot of development happened during that time, during that time yeah. Yeah. and it was very evident that it happened. Uh, but when I arrived, as I say, it was uh, Rena, uh, Rena Lindsay, and John Phillips, mm -hmm. uh, and I and John Phillips. Rena is a qualified teacher, okay. and John Phillips is a, a youth pastor uh, in one of the churches in Northern Ireland. He belongs to a group called Alliance Youth Works, okay. so he, he does a lot of work with the youth. So, uh, Rina had teaching ability, John Phillips had the youth ability to play with kids, and I immediately found myself in the kitchen, 
Because the kitchen is where you because where you used to be. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I found my niche, uh, and I, I felt very comfortable. And uh, I started helping the the girls cook and see what they were doing. And the kitchen provides for a meal for the for the children. The, the children. Then there were two hundred children right here. Okay. And uh, during the conversation, uh, I could I can't speak Portuguese. They couldn't speak English. But we were able to communicate, right. uh, and we knew what each other was meaning. And uh, it soon became evident that the, the mission year was growing, and they hoped for another 20 or 30 children next year. Next year. And, and I thought, well, the conditions, although good, weren't sufficient to cook for 200 children, yes. uh, even though there were going to be 230 next year. So I thought, how can I benefit these people? Uh, to make their life, their, their working holiday uh, easier and uh, more constructive. And uh, I identified the kids was too small and too hot. Uh, so we set about doing a project to extend the kids. We didn't know how we were going to do it. Right. We couldn't go up, we couldn't go forward, and we can't go back. Right. Uh, but there was a store in the back that uh, I thought, well, move that build a store outside and extend the kitchen. And that's what we've done. Okay. Uh, we fundraised in Northern Ireland for that. Right. And, uh, and that was exciting. You told yeah. me a little bit about that already. Yeah. Um, we we uh, did, in, in Ireland there's a lot of pub quizzes. Okay. So we had coffee quiz. And in one of my coffee shops we, we held the, the quiz and uh, we got Brazilian coffee. Okay. And a lot of uh, suppliers donated presents for swap prizes. Right. But one of them uh, was uh, a Ireland rugby shirt from a player called Andy Trimble, uh, a Christian fella mm -hmm. who just broke into the Ireland first team. And uh, that was a great, a, a great a place to yes. mm -hmm. And we, we raised quite a considerable amount of money that night. Right. But between the end of the quiz night till I left, I think it was about six weeks, uh, we, we, we got three times more, but people didn't make gifts to come. Excellent. That generated obviously a lot of, it drew a lot of other people to be a part of the project. That's right, yes. Uh, yeah. And then just you could have done alone, obviously. No, no, they, uh, I couldn't have done it alone. Uh, it's a team effort. Right. And uh, everybody supported And then they followed, obviously you've uh, been yes. able to share yeah. what's happened with them. Yeah. Uh, we took photographs right. and, uh, and explained to people what right. we've done. Uh, we've been asked to speak in church, and uh, I was asked to speak to, uh, it's called Young at Heart Group, okay. and the youngest is about 70. Oh. Okay. Um, but uh, I kept them, uh, not, no one slept while I was telling them what I did in Brazil, yeah. and uh, they told me that they had been praying for me right. while I was in Brazil, yeah. and uh, the majority of them support Project and support my part. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. that's good. Well, we're going to have a chance to see the kitchen and some of the improvements that were made um, uh, during this video. Mm -hmm. One of the things I guess I, I also wanted to ask was how, how this whole experience impacted your life and maybe uh, the mm -hmm. lives of others. Mm -hmm. um, well, they you know were involved in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Well, it has really uh, before uh, I came, I was just. A, a normal guy, still a normal guy. We're all normal guys. But, <laughs> but I, I, I more uh, with coming to Brazil and getting involved and going back and sharing with people what I've done uh, or what, what we've done, the, the team, uh, it has given me more confidence to speak to people. Uh, I got involved in more groups in church. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it effectively opened more doors for me. Yes. Because I, I wasn't involved in a house group, I wasn't involved in doing things on a Saturday with the church, doing, doing the, the, the grinds and that. So I got involved more. Yeah. So it was really, uh, it's been that for me as well. And, it, and you're a new Christian, aren't you? Four years. Four years. Four years. And so in, in some ways, uh, getting involved in missions allowed you to plug, plug into the church. That's right, yes. In, yeah. in more of a, a concrete way. I so very much so. Uh, and it's just it's just fantastic, really, you know. And it's fantastic. Uh, when I keep referring to I did this and I did that, and we did, 
I did nothing. It was the Lord that did it. Yes. I just happened to be by the person right. who he chose to do it. Yeah, it's an awesome privilege to be involved in a mission together. Yeah. And so, and that's what we find so neat. And that's why we're talking to you today is just that that it, uh, God brings people from different parts of the world, and it's yeah. like He knows exactly yeah, uh, where He has them going, yeah. and He puts us together. And uh, as we participate as the body yeah. of Christ, yeah. we yeah. achieve incredible things together. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the time, Arnold. Not at all. Thank God you. Bless you. You too. Okay.